the ropes. Who are we speaking with? Uh, yes, this is Matt Hardy. What's going on, Matt? How you guys doing, man? Good. We're good. Ah, uh, we're doing great, great. We're, we're we're actually taking a trip down uh, memory lane, going back to our favorite tag teams of all time. You being uh, a little bit of an expert of the sort, you know, what's Matt's favorite tag team of all time? Um, I, I you know, coming up, I know uh, obviously I was a huge Road Warriors fan. Uh, I dug the Freebirds. Uh, the Rock and Roll Express, obviously, uh, was something, you know, that eventually evolved into, you know, the Rockers and into the Hardy Boys, you know. But probably probably the Road Warriors stand out in my mind as being, like, the, the biggest and most dominant tag team kind of, of all times, especially, as, you know, as, as you know, being young and as a child. Dokes is on the same page with you. That, yeah, that was we, his, uh, his Matt, we, we, we think just alike, man. Road Warriors are number one for me, too. You guys are awesome, of course, but the Road Warriors are one of my favorites as well. You know, and it, it just depends. Like, the business changed so much. I mean, like, obviously, you could have never had the, you know, the Road Warriors could have never had the great matches that, you know, the Hardys versus Edge and Christian had. Or, you know, obviously, you could have never put the Road Warriors in a, you know, a TLC match or a ladder match. Or, you know, so it, everything, you can't, it's hard to rate everything straight across the board because everybody's different. They work in different eras and they work different styles, you know, but a tag team that stands out just because of the way they, you know, the way they were booked and, you know, the way they looked and the way they intimidated everybody. The Road Warriors definitely stands out as one of the, the most intimidating tag teams. And there was never a point where, you know, those guys, like, went on their own and were extremely successful. They were a tag team their entire career. Absolutely. And uh, Shane brought, our other host, uh, brought this topic up of how it's coming and going to tag team, uh, you know, even even outside the WWE, TNA built it up, and they had a great tag team, and then they've kind of thrown it away side, and we've seen it being built up in ROH. Do you, do you see there's a future in tag team wrestling where a lot of people are getting away from it? No, I, I, I definitely, I think there's a, you know, I think there's a huge market and place for tag team wrestling. You know, I think there's a place for, you know, female wrestling done right, and I definitely think there's a place for, you know, for cruiserweight wrestling, you know, as long as it's done a little differently. I mean, you know, when you look at UFC, sure, you know, UFC has guys, you know, like Brock and, you know, Frank Mir and Kane who actually just beat Brock, you know, that are these awesome heavyweights. But then you look at the guys who are their cruiserweights and their lighter weight divisions. I mean, those guys are, are huge ticket sellers and, and big money draws as well. And wrestling can be that same way if, you know, if the, you know, if whoever's promoting it is actually treating it all fairly and is treating it all equally. You know, I know, it, you know, WWE, the, the way, you know, Vince and company down, the way they look at it is like, okay, well, business isn't red hot. It isn't where we want it to be right now. So we need to make sure our number one priority is finding, like, you know, the next Hulk Hogan or the next Stone Cold Steve Austin. You know, we got to, you know, have Cena or Orton or whoever else. They they have to, you know, they have to become this company guy that makes business hot and good again, and they start drawing great ratings and selling great amount of tickets. And that's their number one concern. And until that happens, you know, they, they won't focus on, you know, tag team wrestling or, you know, a, a cruiserweight division or X division or lightweight division, whatever it may be. You know, if you look back in the day at the Attitude Era, they actually, uh, you know, had a, you know, Stone Cold and, you know, the guys who were actually on top and, you know, The Rock and Mick Foley, those guys uh, that were doing so great at that time, that was actually taken care of, so there was actually a little time and dedication actually put into the tag team division, especially when it came across you got a lot of really great tag teams at that one time. It was kind of hard to deny the, you know, the stuff that, you know, myself and Jeff and, you know, Edge and Christian and the Dudleys, you know, Tuchel, Acolytes, you know, all the guys on down were, were doing it at that time. Even DF- <laughs>